So let's spend a moment to talk about some of the typical goals people have when they have a simulation as well as a prototyping environment. You know, here on the simulation side, okay, we'll assume, right, you're using MATLAB as it's a great environment for that. And on the right-hand side for prototyping, again, you're working in other environments like Visual Studio and Eclipse. So while you're in MATLAB, you're tending to create maybe some new ideas. Here we have a function that we're writing in a MATLAB script. And on the right-hand side, right, you tend to have a lot of code that you have from previous prototypes, previous designs. So here's a bunch of functions we have. But what then one of the goals is, or what would be ideal, is if you can leverage the same C code base back in your simulation environment. So this helps you to model things more properly on the simulation side so that when you're designing, say, this new MATLAB function, it's really taking into account maybe some of the nuances or some of the things that you've maybe optimized for inside of your C implementations. So it makes essentially a more realistic algorithm that you might be creating. And then finally, once you've done and finished your simulation as you transition to prototyping, you can use some of our code generation technology to help automatically translate the MATLAB to C. But ideally, it would be nice if it can reuse, again, that same C code as well as all the interfaces. And so the goal is, again, is to really reuse that C to maximize the reuse. And really what this does is minimize risk because you're only introducing maybe new code for a functionality that you don't have or haven't previously developed. All right, so what I'm going to show here is just kind of showing you the methodology and like how this works. And you see in the green box, we have existing C code. On the left-hand side, we have our simulation where we're actually maybe developing a new algorithm. So using a, a technology, we have something called MATLAB Coder. We're going to be able to call a function called, called coder.ceval. And what this allows us to do is automatically wrap this C code into something we call MEX. MEX stands for MATLAB Executable. And essentially, all that it is is allows MATLAB to be able to call this C code directly. So here you see it on the left-hand side. We have the same custom functions, one through three. But now they're in a MEX wrapper. And now you can call them directly inside of MATLAB. Now let's go ahead and go to MATLAB, where I'll show you how to integrate your C code easily into the MATLAB environment using MATLAB Coder and MEX. Okay, here we are back in MATLAB. And so what I have here is a project, and you'll see this one called test.m. And essentially what this is doing is we're going to be working with a Gaussian filter, and we're also going to be doing some edge detection. And so there's not a lot of MATLAB code here, but I'll step you through the different sections. And by the way, I don't know for those of you who are new to MATLAB, you can do very nice things such as, such as using these double percent signs, creating sections of code. So as you'll see, let me go ahead and run this section of code is you can actually run these things out of order. So here we are, we've actually imported in a nice image of a flower there. We've actually converted it to grayscale. Here we're going to run this section. We're going to actually run a Gaussian filter. So what's interesting about these sections is you can run them out of order and you because there's it's a scripting language, there's no compilation. So essentially you can change variables and iterate very quickly and converge on a solution. But here in this section, we're again calling a Gaussian filter. So here on the left hand side we have our file and folder browser. Here's our Gaussian filter.m. So if we open that up, let me walk you through this real quick. So you'll see here's the entry point. Here we're allocating some output. This is the size of the buffer. But if you look, there's two code paths. On the first one, we have this coder.target. So this is a really nice function to use. So, so using like MATLAB coder, what this is showing us to do is if MATLAB is actually making a call to this function, we're going to run the code that's here. And so this is the MATLAB interpreted code. So here we are doing the Gaussian call this might look familiar because this is what we used in our unit test all right and then also here's another code path so if we're not calling this function from MATLAB we're actually going to run this code path and this is actually related to how we're going to integrate the C code that we had in Visual Studio back into MATLAB again auto wrapping it in that mix wrapper so we can call it directly in MATLAB so let's go ahead and go back to our test routine here. So let's go ahead and run the Gaussian filter. And remember, we're doing this from MATLAB. So here we've run the Gaussian filter. It's a slight 
blur now being applied to it to smooth out the edges. And if you look here, remember we ran that one code path here, we're confirming it. We've run the interpreted MATLAB code. And then finally, we're going to actually run our edge detection on top of it. So earlier, you see here we have this new value here, filtered. IMG, we're going to call the MATLAB edge detection. So if we look at what is this function, real quick, so if we go here, edge detection, here it is. We just have a single line of MATLAB code, and this is using edge, and it's going to be doing the canny method. So let's go ahead and run this section. And here we are. So we actually did the edge, edge detection on it, and because of the Gaussian filter, just smoothed out the edges a bit. So that's it. And if you look what's left here, we're going to run these sections later. This is going to be dealing with our C implementations, but I haven't shown you yet how to integrate that into MATLAB. So how do we deal with our C code? So if you look here under the C source, if I click on this, this should look familiar to you. Right? This is the actual C code that we had inside of our Visual Studio project. All right? And then here's the header file. Nothing really here, just the function prototype. And in order to integrate our C code into MATLAB, creating this MEX file, we've created this build script. So if I open this up, you'll see what's inside of it. And you'll see there's two syntaxes to call it, either build MEX or build lib. So you can create a mex file, which is what we'll do, and you can also call the lib command that will also create a library or C source code as the output. So if you scroll down, there's not a whole lot here, except it's just stating the entry point. Here's the call to the Gaussian filter function. We are setting up the inputs and outputs here. We're creating this configuration target. So this coder.config, this is actually part of MATLAB coder, and this allows us to store a lot of different commands here to actually, for example, here is telling MATLAB Coder what the name of the C file is we want to integrate. Here's the header file. We're going to create a generation report. And then here is actually the command code gen. And we're going to set the entry point. Here's the input variables. And then we'll be able to call it now. So to execute this, we're just going to type build space max and return. And I've just time elapsed things to speed things up. And you'll see we have code generation successful. You can actually view a report. But I want to show you here in a file browser, now we have a new folder that's populated, code gen. And we'll look at that later. But more importantly, we now have this MEX file. Here you see Gaussian filter underscore MEX. So this is actually our Gaussian function that, again, we wrote back in Visual Studio. And now it's wrapped in that MEX wrapper, so we can now call it from MATLAB. So now let's go ahead and, and do that. So if we go back to our test script. So I'm going to go ahead and clear my environment. Let me go ahead and get rid of this figure window. Let's go ahead and hit clear. I have this shortcut, so now the workspace is empty. And let's go ahead and read in our image. There it is. And then we're going to call the Gaussian, but remember, we want the C implementation. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over. This is the MATLAB interpreted one, this code path. But here is the Gaussian C version. So here we have Gaussian underscore max. You can see that being called. So let's go ahead and run this section. There it is. And you can see it looks smoothed out a bit right there. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And then here is calling the MATLAB edge detection, and this is the one for after we call our C implementation, because it is a different variable. Now we have this C underscore filtered image. So other than that, that's the only difference is it's using a different variable. So let's go ahead and run this section. And here we are. We have uh, edge detection performed after we did our Gaussian filter call to the C implementation. So now, this is really a great way, again, of integrating your C back into MATLAB. And some of the motivation of doing this, of course, is it allows you to model and develop your algorithms around your existing C code. This allows you to truly develop your algorithms in a more realistic context, because your C implementations could be actually a lot more optimized, could maybe be already in fixed point. And then in a minute, we'll talk about another benefit of having a lot of your C functions already being implemented in MATLAB. And just to summarize, you saw in the previous demonstration how we we're able to use MATLAB Coder and Coder.C eval to essentially easily wrap 
the C code that you already had in our MEX wrapper so then we could then call it from MATLAB. And you saw how we then inside of MATLAB able to do some comparisons so you can continue to use MATLAB to do maybe some deep analysis of your C implementations within the MATLAB environment. Now in this second demonstration what I'm going to show you is once we've integrated C code, we've used portions of MATLAB coder, now how do we take advantage of that for when we need to do maybe conversion to other languages? For example, we just wrote an edge detection algorithm right as part of our test routines. I'd like to actually create that in, and actually have a C implementation or a starting point. But again, would it be nice, again, we want to leverage our existing C code.